Hello, and welcome to Lutz and Glory. My name is Will. I'm Kathy. And you may have noticed that we are missing a member this week. Our very lovely tech-savvy Bronwyn um, decided to be social instead of watching skating this weekend, and we were very disappointed in her. No, we're just kidding. Um, ideally, though, in the future, we'd like to have, if one of, our regu if one of the regular hosts, either me or Kathy or Bronwyn, are going to be absent, we'd like to have um, a substitute, either from Twitter or elsewhere, or however, from whatever form you hear about Lutz and Glory, and you can fill out a form, um, and we may or, we may select you to be on one of our podcasts. So we're going to start with the ladies' field. Um, Mao Asada making her official Grand Prix um, comeback this week, which we were all very excited about. Um, a solid win for her here. Not perfect programs, but I think a good way to sort of make a statement and mm -hmm. to um, say, you know, I'm back. And she certainly delivered um, in terms of, you know, the triple axle. The triple axle was clean in both programs. That was very nice to see. Mm -hmm. um, so what did you make of her programs? I, you know, it, I think this is a really, really great start for Mal. Um, I'm actually, I we've talked about this before, but I'm really happy that she didn't come roaring out of the gates and score 220 at her first Grand Prix back, um, at her first competition back since 2014 Worlds in Saitama. Because um, I, I definitely think that um, peaking later in the season is ideal. That's exactly what you want as a skater. And I think this is still scoring 197 is not too shabby and she, too, not too shabby and she nailed both triple axles in both programs. Um, she's just so lovely. I'm so happy she's um, back and she is just such a, um, an entity in the sport. Um, and she was severely missed uh, for sure last season. So I'm really happy she's back. About the programs though, um, you know, I, I like the short program. It, it just hasn't quite, um, she doesn't quite, she doesn't quite have me bought yet. Um, I think, I definitely think it has a ton of potential though. I like that she's pushing herself. It's definitely different from things she's done in the past because it's more sensual. Um, and I think that definitely, um, it's very evocative and, it, and it's very, it, that's portrayed through the choreography, which I don't think she's a hundred percent comfortable with yet. Um, but I think she's going to be um, later in the season. I think the free skate as of now is a better fit for her, but I think these two programs are really strong vehicles for her. Yeah, um, I like that the two programs are almost polar opposites in, yeah. you know, the kind of character that she's trying to portray. You know, one is very um, snappy, very uh, modern, and the other is sort of more classic and elegant. And um, the thing um, I enjoyed about Mao was that she seems to be, you know, really enjoying herself on the ice. You know, it's clear that she came back, you know, not for the titles, not to, not to like, necessarily win competitions I mean that's a good thing right but um she she's doing it because she loves to skate and that mm -hmm. comes through so clearly in her skating and that's just lovely to see yeah for sure that's it's so nice to it just makes all the viewers happy that she's back and she's and she's excited and she's ready to go um and regardless of how where she places in her future events this season it's just so great it's just um Phenomenal to see her skate every time she skates in any event. Um, the second place finisher, though, silver medalist Rika Hongo. What an improvement from last season. I mean, she still has a ways to go, I think, in terms of um, extension and pointing her feet, just nitpicky stuff um, that I think, though, really separates the great from the fantastic. Um, because, I mean, she's just made such strides Um since last season, uh, she's worked with, um, over, especially over the summer, she's worked intensely with Akiko Suzuki and Akiko's coach. Um, and they, they've really just sculpted her into um, a real performer. I, it was really just so enjoyable to see. Um, yeah, both of her programs really, really strong this year. I like the Cirque du Soleil uh, short program and the long program, I mean, how can you deny? River dance is always such a, a, a fun time and she's she's giving it like her Carmen her Carmen last year like it was it was it was good 
she performed it solidly and consistently every time, but you know, it would kind of drag. It would it would always kind of lose you um, part of the way through. Um, she wasn't always 100% committed to the character, but with this river dance, it's it's she's always energetic and she's always ready. She's always um, prepared for what's next in the choreography, and I think that that readiness and that. Um, organization is really, really um, great, and it's showing. And it's showing how how able she is to um, perform, especially under pressure. I mean, I don't know. It's she's just made leaps and bounds and improvements, and it's great to see. What do you think of Rika? Yeah, um, last year when Rika made um, the Grand Prix final because Gracie had to drop out, unfortunately, um, I think that a lot of people, you know, the the overall sentiment was like, oh, she got lucky, you know, she might, she's probably not going to make the Grand Prix final next season, but you know, this could prove people wrong. I think mm -hmm. placing second place um, at Cup of China and winning the free skate with a with a personal best. Well, she got personal best in all of the segments actually. Um, so three brand new scores for her. I think, you know, for your first um, Grand Prix event of the season, I think that's huge. And she has, um, like you said, she still has room to grow, which shows that, you know, she can only, um, in, she still has room for her scores to go up, for mm -hmm. her, you know, artistry to improve. I think it really shows how much she's connected to her music this season. It's not just you know, um, something that's playing in the background and that's matching the movement of, you know, her choreography. It's um, a much deeper, I think, connection. Mm -hmm. And that's really lovely to see. And um, do you have any last thoughts about Rika before yeah. we move on to the Russians? Yeah, I like, I like what you said. She's immersed. She's, mm -hmm. she's just committed to the character and you can really, um, it grabs the audience, it grabs the judges. I mean, uh, how can you deny that? And I think, you know, Matt wasn't flawless here. Um, and Rika basically was in terms of jumps. Um, so I think it shows that R Rika was totally unfazed by Mao coming back. And that, sh that speaks volumes to her mental toughness um, in, in such, um, pressure packed competitions like this. It really, really was uh, fabulous to see from Rika and definitely um, great for uh, her future prospects in the season. Let's move on to the Russians though. Placing uh, third and fourth were Elena Radionova and Anna Pogorelia respectively. Placing <laughs> just a little more than a 10th of a point apart from each other, Radionova ending up with the bronze medal um, what do you, what do you, let's start with Radionova. What do you make of, of Radionova's programs? So, um, I think last season and the season before, I wasn't a huge fan of her, you know, style, um, and the way that she, you know, she tends to go for these big dramatic pieces that are almost campy in nature because, um, either of the vocal, either because of the vocals or because, you know, there's, there's just a certain degree of irony in skating to music that was made before you were born, but not in the sense that it's like classical music, like pop music from the 90s and things like that. But um, I think what's really special about her is that she's honed in on what works for her, mm -hmm. which is to say that um, she she's developed this unique style, but she can pull it off because she, um, she sells it so well and she doesn't let the music um, overwhelm her so I I've, I've def she's definitely grown on me in terms of um, how much I enjoy watching her programs um, on another note she appears to have um, matured over the summer mm -hmm. um, both physically and I think artistically so she's taller and um, we saw how that was a bit of an issue with her teammate Yulia Lipnitskaya at Skate America um, and I think that it's less of an issue for Elena, but at the same time, there's little things in her technique, I think, mm -hmm. that still could be reworked. It's not a total, I don't think she needs a total, you know, jump makeover, but, you know, one thing I noticed with her Lutz entry, it's always been strange. We've mm -hmm. always, you know, like, picked up on it, but I don't think it's been a problem until now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think she needs to... Um, because uh, she wasn't at her best by any means here. You know, we, we know she's capable of so much better. Mm -hmm. um, still, you know, not a disaster by any means. 
um, getting the bronze. I just think that um, she needs to be taking into account now these these factors that weren't at play before. Yeah, definitely. I think I like what you said about her programs this year. Like I I think she's settled into a style because last season, you know, we always talk about how like you want to have two programs that are that contrast each other in style to show you have versatility. But I almost thought it was more like like a litmus test for her. I almost thought it was more like a trial and error thing. Like, we'll skate to this, see what works, skate to this, see what works. And I think people responded better to her um, her short program than they did to her free program. And I think the free program, um, the Rachmaninoff was a bit overpowering. And, and, you know, she is just, last season, before she had matured both physically and artistically, she was just this little bundle of energy just bounding around the rinks. Um, uh, pulling tri- pulling off triple leads, triple toes, like they were nothing. Um, and I, d- I don't think she can do that again this season. And while she has matured and she's more statuesque, I almost think that has accentuated and exacerbated some of the issues that we couldn't really see before because she was just this little compact ball of energy that like you sort of ignored her weaknesses and her skating. But if you look at those crossovers, they're really hunched really hunched. Her posture is not that great. And um, I think that really does, it It detracts, it's a bit distracting. It detracts from the overall performance and, and she's projecting naturally downward. And I, I think it's something that, it wasn't too big of an issue here. I just saw the beginnings of it. Um, and I just didn't want it to spiral too out of control because I do think she is a lovely skater. Um, as do I think, I think Anna Pogorelia is also a lovely skater. I think she has a lot of lovely qualities. She's absolutely gorgeous, um, statuesque, really just beautiful to look at on the ice. She's, she's a striking image, and she has a lot more command than um, she's had in seasons past. What do you what do you think of uh, Pogo Reliant? Um, So this season, she's using um, Bolero and Scheherazade in her program. So obviously, these are war horses. These are pieces of music that um, we've heard before over and over, but at the same time, I appreciate her um, effort to make them somewhat original because um, the I think Bolero, the version she uses, um, isn't one we typically hear. It has like um, I believe strings and piano or something, or like a like a combination of instruments that we don't normally hear. And then in her Shahrazad free program, she has she uses cuts. I think at the beginning and end that we usually don't hear. Um, so she's trying, you know, she's making an mm-hmm. effort to be original. And I can definitely appreciate that. Um, again, with, um, as was the case with Radionova, I think she's definitely growing on me in terms of um, the way I perceive her programs. And I, and um, I'm assuming the way other people perceive her programs, because um, she seems to be uh, feeling the music more now than she was before. Um, it's not just last season with um, her Firebird program. It was, you know, full of energy, but at the same time, there was a um, a sense that she wasn't really listening to the music um, as she was skating, um, especially when, you know, coming up near a jump and she was clearly thinking about the jump she was about to do. But I get less of a sense of that here in these programs. So I definitely think that um, her skating is a little bit more effortless this season. Mm -hmm. Um, The the errors, or not the errors, but um, the stylistic qualities, like, you know, her posture and things like that, I think they've improved a little bit. They could still, you know, um, use a little work, but she's, I think she's in a good place as of right now. Yeah, I yeah I agree. I definitely think she's listening to her music a lot more. That opening sequence in her free program is it's very it's very seductive and it's very um, it brings it brings you in. And um, you know, I, I the, her Firebird last year it didn't really have that moment. It was like it was like she was just like monotonously like she wasn't performing her program last year. She was just kind of doing it because she had to and because she was given the choreography to do. And I really think she's definitely making more of an effort this year to perform, which I definitely appreciate. Another um, lovely performer, fifth place finisher here, Karen Chen of the United States, reigning U.S. bronze medalist. Another really strong showing uh, for Karen here. Um, A bit of a disappointing... Um, short program. There are still such lovely moments 
um, in that program, like the spiral, and and you know, there's this moment in the in the uh, the short program where it just it just works. It, I don't know, it just really works with the music, and I and I really love it. And I and I, but I still think it could be pulled out. It can be held. It can be extended just as the slightest bit more, you know. Um, and f the free skate was really really strong, um, really solid. Uh, a good uh, program component score there too. So it shows that judges are really starting to gain an appreciation for her. And I, th I think as well, they should be because she, she has such a, a presence on the ice, even for such a tiny girl. Um, she, she skates so big and, um, and both of her, her uh, pieces of, of music are, are, it's big music that she's skating to. And I, it doesn't, it doesn't drag her along. She drags it along. Um, well, drags is kind of the wrong word, but she carries it. She brings it along and she skates with it and to it rather than behind it, you know? Uh, what do you, what do you think of Karen? Yeah, um, I agree with what you said about her music. I think um, she doesn't, she never lets it overwhelm her. You know, she has this unique ability to f almost fill up the ice despite her, you know, um, despite being a tiny person. Mm -hmm. And um, I think her focus at this point should be trying to put out two clean, if not totally clean, then two solid programs of, you know, equal strength, because that's what she did at um, nationals earlier this year. And we all saw the results of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, she is capable of such great things. I think she just needs to focus on, you know, not um, on like if she were to um, falter in the short again, which is totally possible. I mean, everyone's human, but I think that um, finding ways to recuperate from that, which she did to a certain extent here, but I think that um, f for her, it's um, it should be about balance going forward mm -hmm. and um, knowing how to, you know, because the best performers, the best skaters, you know, throughout um the history of the sport we've seen are ones who can make up for their mistakes mm -hmm. not necessarily people who don't make mistakes because that's that's very rare yeah. but um just the ability to i think um to compensate for whatever mm -hmm. um happens when you're under pressure i think is a important thing for her to develop at this stage yeah for sure and it definitely it that um balance that you were mentioning and 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 compensating for um, anything, any errors you may have made is, is the mark of a true champion, I think. And I, and I think it really, um, she would really benefit from that. Um, it, her, her reputation, she would build her international and her domestic reputation, um, as a skater who is able to fall down and get back up. And that's what, I think that's what judges really want to see. I mean, obviously you can appreciate a, a perfect program, but, um, I think you really want to see that comeback story you know right. um and um i think a skater that could also behoove a zijun lee um the ninth place finisher here um again a bit disappointing for her i mean i i i personally i don't think she gets the program component scores she deserves she has such wonderful choreography and she is she is just she's like a feather on the ice i mean she's just able to settle into her blades and really dig deep into the edge, but it's also quiet and serene, um, um, but not boring. She keeps you interested. And I, 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 I really do love both of her programs this year, and I really hope she can skate them both clean. But we've seen time and time again from Zijun that um, it's difficult for her to find that balance. And, you know, we saw, I know a lot of people have alluded to this, her, her 2013 World Free Skate, she didn't have the best of short programs, but she just had such a wonderful long program and she was able to fight back from that. And I think she, she needs more performances like that. We, we saw little glimpses of that last season um, with her Waltz, um, Waltz of the Flowers short program and her Moon River free skate. Um, we saw that, um, that sort of comeback, that grit at, at Four Continents, but then at Worlds at home, I think the pressure did really get her because she was lovely in the short program and then um, made many a mistake in the long program. And it really is just such a shame because she is just so lovely. She's just such a wonderful skater and she just has so many wonderful qualities that 
um, I think deserve more recognition and will would get more recognition if she would if she could just find that balance. You know, what do what do you think? Yeah, um, I think Zijun is a very um, balletic skater. You know, she has all these qualities that you can't really, um, I think, teach because it's just it seems to be innate the way she moves mm-hmm. across the ice. You know, it's so graceful and effortless. And I think that um, she's a late. I think she peaks. She tends to peak later in the season. But um, I like what you said about um, her not being able to perform at home because I think it's interesting how some skaters um, tend to um, be better in front of a home crowd and some Mm -hmm. skaters kind of um, succumb to the pressure. And I think that um, it'll be interesting to see how um, her programs develop through the season as she faces different crowds Mm -hmm. because I do think that's a big factor for her. It isn't for everybody, but it might be, you know, um, something that's impacting her, you know, mentally. So I would love to see, I mean, these programs um, skated clean. I think they're, they're tailor made for her in the sense mm-hmm. that you couldn't really imagine anybody else skating them. Mm-hmm. She has that really um, special quality. And um, yeah, so I would love to see um, what she can do to develop these programs. Um, for sure. On. For sure. She has a very unique style and it's just, uh, it's very, it's sort of quirky. Um, she's, she's unique, um, but in, in the best of ways. Um, but yeah, for sure. I, I definitely agree with, um, everything you mentioned. So let's move on to the pairs. We have Kavaguti and Smirnov taking the title, a bit of a shock, um, for, uh, a lot of people, I think, especially because it was a hometown crowd and, um, because they were still on their high from their Skate America win. A lot of people expected Sui and Han um, to take this title, but I mean, you gotta give Kavaguti and Smirnoff credit. They've been on the scene for so long. Uh, great to see a great score, and they're really, performances like this keep them in the, the, in the discussion. It keeps them in the mix, and that's what they need to keep doing because they can't be forgotten about. Um, it, from their perspective, they can't be forgotten about if they want to keep progressing, possibly to uh, Pyongyang in uh, 2018. Um, They kept um, their free skate uh, from last season, and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous last season. I thought it really evoked this almost ominous sort of, um, like, cloud over over the audience, and it just brings, it's just, it's super powerful. Um, And it, it didn't quite have that same spark that it had last season, especially at Skate America. But I mean, the two throw quads were unbelievable. I didn't, I actually, I didn't know that they were going for a throw quad loop. I didn't know that they had been I thought I was like, Whoa. I was like, wait, that's definitely a triple, right? I, I looked back and I was like, I was like, oh no, you go like, you, you can't like, you got to nail that throw triple loop. Like, come on. But then I looked back and I was like, all right, <laughs> I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on that one. But, um, so, yeah, definitely two great performances here. The one thing, though, I really hope that they can keep these quality performances up because we saw last season they had these two types of skates at Skate America last season and they were never really able to um, live up to them again, except maybe Europeans. They they won that title. They were great there. But they did kind of rely on mistakes from um, Fedor and Ksenia there. Um, but yeah, hopefully they can keep this going. What do you, what do you think of Kavaguri and Smirnoff? Yeah. Um, I agree with what you said about, um, the, them keeping the program from last season. I think it's lacking a little something mm-hmm. that they had, um, towards the end of last season. I think that just comes with time. They need to, um, be comfortable again in, um, performing this program in front of an audience. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people, have been sort of counting them out since um, mm-hmm. since Sochi, the Sochi Olympics, because, oh, you know, they think, oh, they're in their 30s. They're going to, you know, um, they don't have that long to go. But I think, you know, they're intent on proving these people wrong. And I think they're doing a great job at it because um, they're doing things that nobody else is doing. And mm-hmm. um, at the ripe old age of, I think, 31 <laughs> and 33 or something, um, so that's lovely to see. But yeah, like you mentioned, they also um, 
were great at the beginning of the season last season, but that kind of petered out as the season mm-hmm. went along. And we've talked about um, skaters who peak later, but maybe um, they are the opposite and they peak early. I mean, obviously we don't, we want to see them continue to push the boundaries, you know, keep up the quality of their programs throughout the season. Um, but I think that, yeah, it's a promising start, definitely. Mm-hmm. And if we're looking at the scores, I mean, they won by 0.38. Like, that just yeah. tells you how close the competition was. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think pairs is going to be an exciting discipline to watch this season. Um, we saw Duham and Radford uh, last week at Skate Canada put out, you know, monster scores. Mm-hmm. Um, they won by a mile. And then here we saw... Um, Kavagudi Smirnov and Suyin Han go sort of head to head. Mm-hmm. So it just tells you that there's so many um, pairs teams this year mm-hmm. that are capable of doing so much and yeah. who are um, just powerhouses in both the um, the program program components yeah. section and um, the technical stuff. So I think that um, it'll be it makes for exciting competition, you know, mm-hmm. obviously. But um, yeah, they all have. I think all of these teams have their different strengths mm-hmm. and weaknesses, and um, it'll be interesting to see how this stacks up, you know, come world or come um, a major competition like that. Mm-hmm. Definitely, and interesting to note, um, all of these. It seems like a throw quad or a quad twist. It almost seems like it's the new norm. It almost seems like it's what you have to do to, to be the very best. Um, because Duhamel and Radford, especially with those side-by-side triple lets, I mean, they are just so technically exemplary that they, they've set the standard and all of these teams are finally starting to bring it. But lest we forget that program components are half the score in both, it's, it's half your score. And what I love seeing, it's just it's just all really good skating from these top teams. They're not garnering all their points just because they can do a throw quad. It, they're doing it because they're balanced skaters um, and, and, and skilled, mastered performers. Um, both Duhamel and Radford, Kavagudi and Smirnoff, and especially Sui and Han. I think, I, just Sui and Han, they're just so amazing. <laughs> I, they, their throws are astronomically huge their their expression is second to none um, in my opinion and i i especially i'm just in love with their their short program just gets better and better every time still room for improvement they have little stumbles here and there in the short but i really think that i you know i'm really gunning i hope they're the ones gunning for that world title but it's again it's going to be so exciting to see this competition amongst all these teams um, I believe, though, that Sui and Han got a time violation in the free yeah. school. And that's what cost them the title at home. But, <laughs> I, you know, a little bit a little bit disappointing. But, you know, they still made the Grand Prix final. Um, and it's still a great, great win. That I don't want to take anything away from Kavaguri and Smirnov's win because definitely well-deserved for the both of them. Um, quickly mentioning here, the other two uh, Chinese teams, uh, the bronze medalists, Yu and Jin, the reigning world uh junior champions and wong and wong definitely a better showing for them here especially right. in the free skate um but it was amazing the short program to see it was it was um the wongs and then you and jin breaking that 70 mark um and it was i don't know it was just really great skating especially in the short program in the free skate too though not to the same extent um i think both of these teams are I, I mentioned this, I remember in our in our Worlds recap from last season, there was just such intra-country rivalry amongst yeah. all these teams. And it's really, really great to see. Honestly, most of these, like, Wong and Wong could definitely, like, be on the American world pair team. <laughs> um, but, I mean, they're... They're just all so good and in so many different ways. Like you and Jin have a very different style from Sui and Han and the Wongs. Um, and they, are, they just all differ from each other. And uh, it's just so great to see that versatility. What do you, what do you think of you and Jin, Wong and Wong and the Chinese pairs field in, in general? Um, yeah, I think that having so many talented teams in one country, and I believe you, Jin, have the same coaching team as Sui and Han. Um, 
that is, I think, definitely a benefit because while you have that, you know, rivalry and I'm sure it's intense, I think that they're pushing each other at the same time. And that's always, you know, something that you look for in a sport that's as competitive and oftentimes unpredictable as um, skating. So I think that uh, the thing I like about Eugene is that they have this sort of understated quality where they're not, um, they're not about necessarily the big bold elements but um the quality of their skating and their their sort of um chemistry with each other i think speaks volumes um about the kind of skaters they are and then i think um wang wang are i i wouldn't i would consider them to be um a tier lower than mm -hmm. Eugene and sui and han but still you know a superb you know pairing and um great qualities and I, I like that um, they're not phased by having these, you know, incredible um, teammates competing mm -hmm. against them, you know, um, being on the same ice. And, you know, they, they certainly did well for themselves and they seem to be improving um, from their performance at Skate Canada. Still, um, not without mistakes, you know, I, I believe they had a fall in the um, uh, free skate. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I definitely a great springboard to be coming off of you know um they've still got time you know they've still got plenty of room to develop and grow it would be interesting to see how um they go forward in terms of the artistic direction and mm -hmm. whether they'll go for those um throw quads that quad twist those um difficult things that like you said are becoming the norm in pair skating right now mm -hmm. yeah actually you uh you Jin, um attempted the throw quad sal cow in the free skate. Um, and they said that they had been landing it consistently in practice. She was pretty angry because she was like, she was nailing it in practice. Um, so it's great to see that fight, that fire from them. And um, also Wang and Wan, they're just so lovely. They're so likable. And I remember it was funny at Junior Worlds last year, um, you, you, you and Jin were there and it was like, what, what, why are these seniors here? Like, wh what are they like, <laughs> doing on the ice. They were just in a class of their own there and they were just so ready and to do a, fir a first um, full senior season, you know? Um, but I think another, we see the same type of intra-country competition and rivalry in Canada. Um, and we, we see it um, especially in the, in the pairs discipline. I mean, it's just stacked, a stacked field. Um, and I think that this is a bit disappointing, a bit disconcerting for uh, Lubav and Dylan um, finishing seventh here. Um, you know, I, I think they are better than this. I really do think they are better than this. I, um, they had, there was some, some, some weird thing that doesn't usually happen that happened to them um, in the short Dylan program. Missed, they missed a lift. Well, mm -hmm. the, one of their lifts was um, invalidated in the yeah, short, yeah. and then they missed a lift in the free skate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those definitely costly, I think, fluke errors um, for sure. But, I, you know, it is disappointing because I think a lot of people, myself included, put Lubov and Dylan as the third ranked, maybe second ranked Canadian team. Um, and, you know, having scored lower than what Kirsten and Michael scored last week at Skate Canada, it's a, it's, um, a bit troubling. But I, 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 I definitely don't think this was a disaster for them, but I think they, they got to keep an eye out. You know, they, I think this is a, it's a starting point and they just have to improve from here. Um, and, you know, like I said, certainly not a disaster, but I mean, the Canadian pairs field, it's just unbelievably stacked. Um, and any four of these teams could make the world team and finish pretty respectively. Um, or pr respectively, not respectively. Uh, <laughs> what What do you What do you What did you make of uh, Lubov and Dylan um, at here? Um, I think it was interesting that last season um, most people um, put them ahead of uh, Kirsten and uh, More Towers and Marinero, but you know it looks like maybe the tables have turned this season. Mm -hmm. um, just in terms of, um, I think the attitude they're bringing to their program. Kirsten and Michael, um, this season, they seem to have that newfound sense of 
uh, passion, that new fire for competing and performing. Whereas um, Dylan Luba's programs, you know, they're nice, they're they're pleasant to watch, but I don't get that um, same you know, um, passion for performing as I did from them last season. You know, I think that um, they just haven't found, I think, their confidence yet. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure that will come with time. And the errors they made here, I mean, they're not – I'm they're smart enough. I trust Mm -hmm. in them enough to not repeat those errors going forward. And so, I, like you said, I think this is a one-time thing. So, they're not – they're going to learn from their mistakes, I hope – and um, they're going to make their elements, you know, stronger than ever before. For sure. And it also, it doesn't really help that last season was sort of a dream debut season for their, for them. I think they did everything they possibly could have done to really establish themselves um, and, and as like a, a, a viable team, you know? Um, so, um, but yeah, I, I really do think this, this really isn't catastrophic for them. Um, we'll hope to see them improve later on in the season. Let's move on to the ice dance. Anna Capolini and Luca Lanote of Italy uh, capturing the title here, finishing first in both segments. Um, you know, I think, I mean, they're just obviously they're a lovely pair, but their their programs this year are, are a little bit forgettable. And I it was weird because last season at Cup of China, they won the bronze medal, and that was that was a bit disappointing for them. And I remember that was their that was their only showing before Europeans, and that was like they had kind of been scooted off, um, scooted out of the comp of the conversation for worlds and for Europeans. And you know they did fight back, but I think they really almost had not have to start from scratch. But they I think they were at a deficit coming into the season in terms of. Um, how the judges like perceive them and actually judge their performances and how everyone um, viewed them in uh, relative to the other dance teams. But I think this is great for their confidence though, um, beating Chalk and Bates who uh, won Skate America by a large margin and, and have really established themselves as the top US team. Um, so what, what do you think Luca and Anna will um, take away from Cup of China and use later on in their season. I think um, I I enjoyed both of their programs, but I think that, like you said, they're a bit um, repetitive in terms mm-hmm. um, in terms of the fact that you know it's sort of like um, we're seeing the same programs as they performed last season or the season before. Like, there's not. Um, anything new from them necessarily Mm -hmm. which you know I mean regardless they're still fantastic skaters and you know they show so much um, warmth and joy on the ice and towards each other and they're just lovely to watch but I'm I'm left wanting a little bit more Mm -hmm. just in terms of creativity or originality because especially in the free dance you know that's supposed to be your time to show who you are show Mm -hmm. what makes you unique as a team and if they did a little bit more of that you know we saw their um they're very creative and um almost humorous exhibition program and if they could bring a little bit of that into the free skate or the free dance or the short dance I think that would be um an improvement for them I mean they they're still at a great place you know they won Lombardia trophy they won Mm -hmm. here I mean it's gonna be great they're setting themselves up for you know a great track record this season Mm -hmm. but I think that um they shouldn't be um they shouldn't see that as a reason and I'm sure they won't as a reason to you know not keep working on the um sort of artistic elements of their programs. Yeah, they seem definitely, I agree. They seem like they've they've locked themselves in this in this little box and and their it's their comfort zone and it's what they're good at, but I don't think that's not what creates like trademark programs. You know? I feel like I feel like they really in the coming seasons, I know we're still just starting this season, but I think Later on, they could definitely, I would definitely behoove them to explore and see the different types of music and styles and cultures that they could um, convey on the ice. And I think, and I think it would, 
um, work wonders for their skating and their potential results. Um, Chalk and Bates, uh, skating away with the silver medal here from Cup of China, putting together, um, you know, it, it, was, it was weird. The, the tech, they're usually such a technically proficient team, and that was really their shortcoming here um, in China. I, she had the issue with the twizzles and the short dance, and on both of their step sequences and the free dance, they only had level twos, um, is what I hear. Um, and, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not as great as they were in Skate America. Again, I don't think it's anything really to worry about because they've solidified a spot for the Grand Prix Final. They'll right. train for that and they'll work to solidify a spot there. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I, again, I like both of their programs this year, but again, it's kind of the same deal with Anna and Luca. It's, it's nothing, nothing grabs you, nothing makes you, nothing compels you, really. They have phenomenal lifts, and she is just such a performer. I mean, she is just an innate performer, and he has fabulous skating skills. Um, and he, he compliments her really nicely. But I just, I think they could definitely work to, to just, they gotta push it a little bit more. They gotta, they gotta step outside that box. Um, because I think we've seen that with the Shibutanis, like we saw right. uh, last weekend at Skate Canada, who scored very similar, oh, just below what Chalk and Bates score, scored here this weekend in China. Um, so, and I think that that's the mark of how um, strong of a short dance and free dance the Shibutanis have. It shows how strong of a vehicle both of those programs are um, for the rest of their season. And I think, again, Chalk and Bates have to up their game a little. Um, I don't want to sugarcoat that because they are still phenomenal skaters and there's, there was still, they still put together a really strong score and two really strong programs. But if you want to be the top tier, you, you have to keep pushing it. Um, so what do, you, what do you think Chalk and Bates, uh, what do you think of Chalk and Bates and what do you think they, they should do? Yeah, um, so they can rest easy for now. You know, they mm -hmm. have about a month till the Grand Prix final. But I think in that time, they should really um, use their training wisely. And like you said, clean up those technical errors that they're making. Because mm -hmm. um, especially since the Shibutanis have been so strong. And I think that if they want to defend um, their national title, they, I mean, they better watch their backs. Because um, the Shibutanis have sh um, showed us that you know, they're, they're not phased by um, everything that happened to them last season, you know, not getting the levels consistently. Mm -hmm. um, so they're on, they're on the rise and Chalk and Bates, you know, they have to um, act similarly if they mm -hmm. want to like continue that upward tra trajectory. <laughs> um, yeah. Like you said, um, their programs, you know, aren't the most, you know, attention grabbing. I do think that, um, I did enjoy their Americans in Paris free dance last year a little bit better than this mm -hmm. one. I just think that um, it it looks a bit labored, you know, especially in mm -hmm. the lifts. They have new lift positions. Everything looks a little bit like um, they're thinking too hard about what they're mm -hmm. doing. It's not seamless yet. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, if they could just bring more, I don't know, personality, bring more um, – uh, like just bring a little bit more for us to watch and look mm -hmm. for as audience members to draw us in. That would be awesome because they have, you know, a great base to work off of. But a lot of the, I think, um, nitpicks about their skating in the past has been, you know, Madison's doing all the performing or mm -hmm. Evan's not like projecting enough. So I think that, um, I mean, these are things that are not hard to fix, especially at this point. They're so established. Right. Um, so if they could work on, you know, just the little details, that would be, you know, great for them um, mm -hmm. going forward in the season. Definitely. I was I was like so disappointed when they had to switch um, their short dance from Dark Eyes because I thought that performance at Nebelhorn was really special. Um, and I really would have liked to see how that program would have progressed. But still, um, yes, I certainly agree with everything you said. They really still have to keep pushing that envelope and keep 
garnering fans um, through their performances. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Ilyanik and Zigonshin because they, they're special. They're a special team, I think. I mean, I know everyone is still kind of, not everyone, but a lot of people are still sort of mourning the loss of Ilyanik and Katsalapov, but I really, I really think, I don't think he's a weak skater. I think he projects and I think he, um, he, he holds his own in the team. Um, I think she may wear the pants, if you will, in the relationship, but I think he certainly um, is no slouch. Um, and I, and I, I appreciate um, the artistic liberties they're taking in both of their uh, programs this season. Um, you know, again, it's like, where's the line between original and campy <laughs> is, is it's, it's a bit crossed uh, that line in the short dance, but I love it. Like, I love it. It's, it's just really fun. Um, and I, and I do, a pre I like the, I like the, uh, the free dance, the free to free dance. That's, that's a tongue twister. Um, <laughs> but uh, again, um, I, I did expect them though to score a little bit higher. I didn't, I, I wouldn't have predicted that they would have been 10 points plus below Chalk and Bates because they scored really, really well at a uh, more, more Dorvian ornament, that uh, Challenger Series event. And while I know scores were like super inflated there, um, even just for an, inter even for an international event, there was, there was a lot of <laughs> inflation going on there. Um, but I, I didn't expect them to score as low as they did. Um, but, you know, again, just like with Chalk and Bates, I, it's not a disaster. Um, a bronze is a little bit disconcerting, though, for the prospect for the Grand Prix final, their immediate goals, um, because you, you really do want to make that final if you want to um, set yourself up for success, especially at the World Championships uh, later on the season in Boston. Um, so, yeah, but I, I two um, – enjoyable programs here for them. So what do you, what do you think of Elena and Ruslan? Um, I definitely appreciate that they're trying to set themselves apart in terms of um, like the sort of concept behind both programs. They're definitely unique. They're definitely not your average, you know, cookie cutter, short dance and free dance. And um, I like that um, they're portraying it nicely out onto the ice. It's not rigid. It's not forced. It's not like, oh, they're trying so hard to be, you know, um, mm -hmm. a quirky or like charming. And, but I think that um, some of the mistakes they made here, you know, they got two deductions in the um, free dance. One was for a costume um, by, or costume failure. So that's not, that's sort of an, out there, you know, fluke thing, but mm -hmm. one of them was for um, a time violation on their lift, and mm -hmm. um, we saw that also with um, Sinitina Katsalapov at Skate America two weeks ago, um, but, you know, these are things that could be easily fixed, so I don't think that the scores they're getting are a ceiling, because I think that they could certainly top them. We've seen them yeah. top them last season, so um, uh, I think that this season is going to be a little bit more challenging with Bobrova Soloviev coming back and um, having to, I think, challenge for the national title or the Russian national title this year. But um, I think that it's great that they're um, pushing the artistic boundary. It's great that they're doing something different. So mm -hmm. I think that that's definitely, you know, worth noting. And it's definitely going to be, um, it's definitely going to, be of importance in the judges' eyes going forward. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think judges are really going to appreciate that, especially at um, Russian Nationals, because that's going to be quite the competition, because we have um, Elena and Ruslan, and we have um, Nikita and Victoria, and we have Bobrova and Soloviev, and Stepanova and Vukin. I mean, there are just so many teams. Um, and the judges really want to see, especially domestically, what sets you apart? What makes what makes me want to give you the most points, you know? And I think um, Ilyanik uh, and Zigantran really have mm -hmm. that, that quality that like, yes, give us, give us the points. We have, we have the performance, we have the programs, we have the skating. And I, I think, I think they're, I think they're really going to be um, one of the top Russian teams. 
Um, I definitely think they're going to make the world championship team. Though they did score lower, interesting to know, they did score lower than both Sinitsyn and Katsalapov and Bobrova and Soloviev here, um, just by a couple of points. But it is worth noting. So, again, a lot of competition. Also, just want to make note, uh, we wish the best of luck and uh, a good convalescence and healing to Caitlin Hawaiak, who unfortunately uh, came down with food poisoning and, and had to withdraw from the free skate. Um, we, it would have been so lovely to see the free dance again, but um, we wish them all the best and we hope she heals well. So, yeah. I just wanted to um, mention Wang Lu, the um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Chinese national dance um, champions. Um, they had a bit of an underwhelming performance here. I really enjoyed their um, Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon free dance. I think it's so mm-hmm. vivacious. It's so engaging. And they're able to pull off these spectacular lifts because of, you know, the height difference between the two. Mm-hmm. But I think that, that uh, it's a double-edged sword because um, they also don't have the synchronicity of some of the other teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they placed... Uh, sixth here i believe or, or yeah sixth, after yeah. the um the two teams that withdrew so a little bit disappointing in um in terms of um a hometown crowd performance but i think that you know they they're capable of so much more their personal yeah. bests are way higher than what they got here and it's just a matter of i think developing the programs throughout the season because they're very ta- a very talented team and they're kind of a we talked about this a bit last season. They're kind of a breakthrough for Chinese ice dance, yeah. which hasn't been that prominent of a field in the past. But, you know, I just – I wish them all the best. You know, I think they're um, they're pioneers and they're doing their thing, and I, I applaud that. And I think that um, they have really great um, programs and concepts to boot. So it would be great mm-hmm. to see them um, improve upon this performance going forward. For sure, definitely, yeah. They're they're so enjoyable. They're so lovely, and I don't know. It's just really funny because you wouldn't think that their short dance music is a waltz, but then you think it's oh one two three one two three one two three, and it's like oh this works, and it's and it's original and it's um quirky and it's very them. It's they're they're very unique, and I um and obviously that sh- that free dance is um I hope one that's gonna really. Uh, make its mark later on in the season because I think it's lovely. It's, it has that intensity. It 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 draws you in. It really grabs you. I I love it. I love it a lot. Let's move on to our final discipline of our recap: the men. Javier Fernandez of Spain taking the title um, by a pretty uh, comfortable uh, margin over uh, Jim Young. But you know, it. I, we'll get we'll get to um, uh, Boyang, but I. Just, oh, that quad lots is just incredible. But let's talk about uh, Javier first. Putting together two really strong programs. I especially, I think his short program is definitely noteworthy. I think he, there's a lot of commitment and it, it's, not te- it's not necessarily a character piece, which is what we've talked about before is what, um, is what Javier, Javier excels in is um, using a character um, in the music, in a piece of music, as as the program's driving force, um, and I and I, earlier in his career, he needed that character to really bring him those program component scores. But now I think he's really come into his own. That he's able to explore other genres, and I think this this short program is wonderful. Um, I think it's it's um, different from anything he's ever done, and I really really do enjoy it. Um, it's it's a bit like his Black Betty short program last season. It was such a standout for him. Um, and I think the short program is uh, like that too. And I do, I like the um, the Guys and Dolls free program. I don't love the musical Guys and Dolls, but I, I, um, I think he does a great job with it. Uh, you know, nailing that first quad toe. Um, and you know, I think his skating skills really have improved. Um, as uh, as the seasons have progressed, I really think he's improved a lot. Still, maybe not quite the caliber of Chan uh, and Hanyu, but you know, two seventy point five five—that's a good score. And he he's really um, he's proven himself. Uh, and I think 
he's uh, riding on that confidence from uh, his bit of a, of a shocking world title last season, though very deserved world title. Um, I mean, I think that's worked wonders for his confidence and is going to uh, further on in the season. What did, what did you make of Javier? Um, yeah, I know about his short program. I'm, I'm going to have to disagree with you a little bit here because mm-hmm. while I enjoy – um, the program as an overall package. I think some of the choreography, especially in the beginning, to me, it seems a little bit over route. It seems like he's, um, you can sort of tell that it's choreographed by like a ballroom dancer as opposed to a skating specific choreographer because mm-hmm. there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of the arms, there's a lot of, um, a lot of like dramatic gestures and it works with the music certainly um i'm just not the biggest fan of it regardless um a very solid performance from javier um i think he's really proving that his win at worlds wasn't just a fluke you know mm-hmm. wasn't because he wasn't just because user faltered it was you know he's really coming into his own as um a contender in um the top tier of men's figure skating, you know, to be a uh, talked about in the same breath as, you know, like you said, Patrick Chan or Yuzuru. And um, so, yeah, he, he, I mean, it was an undisputed win here. I, I do have a few question marks though, about his program component scores. Um, well, I, I agree that he's a great skater. I support him fully. You know, he has so many, um, uh, amazing qualities that are that you just can't teach like his ability to um interpret the music his uh, charisma especially Mm -hmm. but i think that to be receiving um i think like um uh, yeah to be receiving like all almost all nines is i mean to me that seems a bit high i understand that he's the reigning world champion you know and that comes with you know a slight pcs boost but it also, it makes me question, you know, how that's going to compare to um, the other skaters when they are, um, the other former world champions when they are, you know, going head to head. So it'll be interesting to see if, you know, that's specific to him or it's going to be all across the board because, um, you know, we've seen in years past how inflation can get a little bit out of hand. You know, that seemed to... Um, uh, tempered down a little bit in um, the past season, but so I just I I'm gonna keep an eye out on that. Aspect, yeah, definitely, definitely. And I I we've always we've seen this grouping at the top for the past couple seasons. Now it's been Fernandez, Chan, Han Yu, and I always have I've personally grouped Chan and Han Yu just the slight. I think they're the the best of the best, honestly. I really, I think in terms of program component scores, they just both, obviously both have very different styles, but wonderful all the same. Um, I just always think Javier has been like the tiniest run down. I just don't think it's as a native of quality um, as uh, Chan and Han Yu. And his weaknesses do start to show when he falters on the jumps, um, but less so than it has in the past. I really do think his skating has improved to where he can afford to make mistakes and still upkeep the qual uphold the quality of the program. Um, let's move on to uh, Jinbo Yang. Uh, just unbelievable technical prowess, scoring far and away the highest technical element score in both programs. I mean, it was just it was so exciting. I, his his air position is ridiculous. His feet in the air are so so tight, and. The quad lunge, triple toe in the short, just mind boggling, mind boggling. Um, and I, you just, you just think he obviously is a, his skating is driven by that technique. It's driven by those jumps. And it was, it was very comforting to see that in the IJS that the judges weren't, weren't um, wavering in their, you know, obviously you can jump, but you, you don't have, you're not Patrick Chan yet, you know? And I, I was happy, I was happy to see that disparity in TES and PES, PCS, because um, he, obviously his technique and his jumps are, that's where his strong point is. And I think this is the judge's message, the judge's way of telling him that he's got a long ways to go, but that this is obviously a phenomenal start. I mean, 
four quads. And um, the uh, long program is <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable stuff. Uh, what did you make of him? Yeah, yeah. Um, but well, just touching on the, the quad, let's triple toe a little bit. He, for that one element, he received 19.19 points, which, you know, I don't have the stats memorized, but I'm pretty sure that's some kind of record for, like, points scored by a single element. It's got to be. But, you know, we know he can jump. He makes the jumps look so easy. It's like he's floating. Like, it's it's like he's on the moon or something. Like, gravity doesn't apply to him the same way. Um, But... At the same time, you know, I hope he doesn't rest on his laurels because he, I mean, his technical um, goods were enough to get, bring him silver at this event. But I hope he isn't complacent and he doesn't decide, OK, um, there's no need to work on my artistry, no need to work on my skating skills um, because I have these insane jumps. Because, like, I don't want to jinx him or anything, but, you know, he, he could still grow i mean he's he's still a teenager so like mm-hmm. these physical changes could still affect him later on and i hate to i'd hate to see him you know um be affected by that or um um have his jumps not be solid at one point and then have nothing left because he's um failed to develop the other aspects of his skating i mean i'm sure that won't be the case but um just something to look out for i hope that he um works on like you said the, all the aspects in which he um he differs from the top men because he's not yet at that level where um even without the jumps even if you take away all the impressive um the technical things that he still has a solid foundation because i don't think he's quite there yet mm-hmm. yeah for sure and i think it's his his style it's not it's a bit it's a bit of an acquired taste um and uh, you know he does he he still kind of skates around like um like a go-getter and a hockey almost like a hockey player you know and i think um it, he just needs to grow he just needs to develop artistically because i think he and his and his camp understand that he doesn't quite have the um innate artistry and movement of someone like shoma who's moved, who's had this meteoric rise into the senior rank. So I think um, it definitely, that definitely speaks to how much work needs to be done, but still unbelievable. Congrats to him for um, getting the silver medal at home. It was also great to see uh, Han Yan on the podium um, at home in China. Uh, You know, not the highest of scores. We know he's capable of doing so much more, but I almost feel like the, like, ideal skater would be if you combined um Bo Yang's technique and Han Yan's um you know just skating skills and flow and everything but the jumps while he's still a fabulous jumper he's um not the most consistent um so what did you make of, of Han Yan and his programs here I think um Han Yan is one of those um I feel like niche skaters where he mm-hmm. has this um, very special charm to him where that sets him apart from um, other skaters. He's at once um, youthful and sophisticated. So he, he, uh, he walks the fine line between the two. And I think that's really, that makes him really interesting to watch. And um, he brings something special to his programs so that you feel like, um, you know, this is a Hanyan trademark. Like nobody else could skate this program the way he does. Um, so um not his best performance by any means um but i i like to see the fact that he um was able to come from behind in the short program placing sixth in the short program but um third in the free so um the ability to kind of recover from that is you know very ideal in any skater so um hopefully in the future you know he can work on his consistency but um as soon as he does that, you know, he's going to be really a force to be reckoned with. For sure. And I definitely, I think it's good that he's got both of his Grand Prix out of the way early so that now he can just um, kind of go home, uh, rest up a little bit and really get back in um, to training uh, for Chinese nationals and four continents um, and worlds because I, I, he's just such a 
gorgeous skater. I like what you said about how he has that youthful exuberance, but is also so sophisticated and almost languid on the ice, his style is. Um, really great to see another skater. Really, really great to see him perform so well. Super, super unexpected. The uh, pewter medalist of 2015 Cup of China, if you will. Uh, Grant Hochstein of the United States placing fifth in the short and fourth in the free program. I, I was... So I was so proud of him. I, I, it was so great. I love his short program. I think it's so lovely. Um, he has this very, um, he has a flow. He has, he really does have lovely skating skills. Um, and I, and I think he also has, he has a natural upward projection. And I think that really speaks to his posture too. I think he has fabulous posture and he's very refined. He's a very refined skater. And I think um, technically he was, he was pretty strong here too, obviously still um, technically and artistically room to grow, but the program component scores he were, he were, um, he was getting were really, really strong um, by international standards, especially. Um, and this makes that men's competition at us nationals all the more interesting. Uh, so what, what did you think of Grant here? Um, so Grant was a pleasant surprise for me. I was not expecting him to place fourth, but I'm, I'm so happy that he did because, um, the last time actually that he, he had a Grand Prix assignment was way back in 2010. So five years ago, it's been five years since, um, he, he competed at a Grand Prix event, but to go out and produce you know, a performance like this is incredible. You know, it shows that he hasn't slowed down one bit. He hasn't regressed at all. If mm -hmm. anything, he's progressed, which is, you know, all, uh, I mean, always something we look for. Yeah. And um, I like what you said about um, him being um, sort of that, I guess, self-aware kind of skater. He's very um, good about posture, you know, his lines and his just the small things that, you know, make a skater that much more polished on the ice. Mm -hmm. And I think it helps that he's um, he's a coach in addition to a competitive skater. So that probably makes him more aware of these aspects, you know, on a daily basis since he's mm -hmm. training, you know, younger skaters. Right. And um, so I love his both of his programs, especially his free skate. Um, I think that he really brings something – um, new to the music even though mm -hmm. you know it's a soundtrack we've heard many times before you know I think that he um, he's great about um, performing uh, projecting out to the audience you know um, uh, even though he's not necessarily you know a renowned skater or he hasn't been um, very prominent on the international level but I think that um, that could you know very change very soon and yeah. um uh, the point you made about um, American Nationals, definitely. We saw Tim Delensky last week um, put out also a surprisingly solid performance, in the, especially in the free skate. So, I mean, these, these men um, all being on the rise, it's going to make for a really exciting field. And, you know, we've, yeah, we've heard, you know, the cynical, the naysayers say, you know, um, U.S. men can't, you know, they can't, most of them don't have quads or like they can't win internationally, but you know, this new crop I think is proving them wrong. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's definitely exciting to see, not just because you root for the, you you live in this country, but right. because um, you always want to see that, you know, resurgence mm -hmm. in that um, coming back to a greatness that, you know, um, that was last seen, you know, a generation or so ago. Yeah, Grant has always, like, he's always been there. Like, he's always been at U.S. Nationals, and he's always been lovely to watch. I always forget um, what a lovely skater he is. And in a way, that's not great that I always forgot, because it means that he was sort of um, an expendable skater on the domestic scene. But now I really, I'm not going to forget these programs. I, I think he's really established himself, and I think that's going to, um, prove to be uh, wonderful for his confidence and hopefully his future results. Um, you know, really, I am rooting for him. And he and Caroline are so cute. I, they're so cute. Um, just a little side note. But 
Yeah. Uh, is there anything else or anyone else you want to make mention of? Um, I want to shout out to, we talked about this beforehand, um, the, uh, the Russian man who unfortunately um, came in last place, you know, not his, not an ideal performance, but his programs. Morris, um, I'm going to butcher his last name, Kvitashvili, I believe. Kvitashvili. Yeah, yeah, that. Um, <laughs> his short program. I mean, you just if you haven't seen it, please do us a favor and please go watch it. And um, preferably watch the one from the Mordovian Ornament where he was clean. Unfortunately, he was um, he made mistakes in um, here at Cup of China, but. The, the selection of music, it can't be to the degree that you can't help but, like, dance along and sing along. It's just so, um, it's just so humorous in the sense that, you know, he's clear. I mean, it's it, it almost seems like, you know, you're being punked or something like that. <laughs> but it, it's just, um, it's just, they're so, um, entertaining. And he's, he, he's more like, um... When he, same with his free skate. It feels like he's doing exhibition programs, but they're obviously competitive. Again, not his best performance, but but when these programs are clean, you know, um, these are the kind of skates that when um, they're delivered properly, I mean, they're gonna the full effect of it really hits you, and you're you, you're just singing along, dancing along. I don't know about you, but I was full out like matching his choreography his insane choreography yeah so just wanted to make a mention of that my new favorite skater or one of my new favorite skaters yeah. uh, for that reason I don't know if I was as moved as you were but I do appreciate I do appreciate um how out there he was and how gutsy he was and he would just I just, he doesn't care what anyone else thinks of his programs because he's going to do them and they're going to be awesome. But yeah, def very entertaining to watch, uh, if, if not anything else. Uh, <laughs> but um, So yeah, I think, you know, what a great competition this was. We weren't really able to watch much of it live since we both live on the East Coast and they were happening while um, we were uh, slumbering. But, you know, uh, a great competition here marks the halfway point of the Grand Prix season. And we're inching closer to Barcelona and the national season. And before you know it, it's going to be March and everyone's going to be hyped up for Worlds. So I think um, definitely a very exciting competition. And I cannot wait for uh, Trophy Eric Bumpard for uh, next weekend. So uh, for Lutz and Glory, my name is Will. I'm Kathy, and as always, you can find us on Twitter at Let's and Glory. You can also follow our blog, um, blogspot.com slash Let's and Glory, and um, we'll be posting this on our YouTube channel, as always, and I think that's about it. Awesome. Yay. Yay. Bye, Bye, everyone. Thank you.